Several years ago, in fact, more than 10 years ago, we were given oak paneling, oak cabinet doors by a friend of ours, which we have stored in uh, our garage for quite some time. Today, I wanted to show you a very quick clip on what I did over the summer by building a platform. This platform is made up of those oak cabinet doors, which is now the place where I have our antique cast iron garden urn. This DIY was fairly easy to make. Behind the cabinet doors, I have pressure treated wood that formed as the base. On top and on the bottom are concrete slabs that I use for the foundation and the firm cap that will support the garden urn. That garden urn is heavy and so it needed some sturdy so that it doesn't wobble. Different clip, different day, different project. I wanted to show you guys, this is still along the same garden bed where we have the garden urn. Um, I wanted to show you my initial bulb planting for fall 2021. Recently, I posted on Facebook my haul, my bulb haul for the year, and I was able to amass quite a lot uh, for a bargain. And uh, what we have here are bulbs that are called daffodils. Daffodils are deer resistant. They're the yellow bell-shaped flowers uh, that come up first among the bulb family during the spring. This bag of 50 daffodils are called Dutch Masters. And just looking at the picture, these are bright, egg yolk yellow daffodils that grow to about 10 to 12 inches tall. They're pretty hefty and pretty big. Um, flowers can range from between three and a half to four inches across. For me, ever since I came to America, nothing spells spring, nothing really heralds the arrival of spring more than a friendly visit from a really good group of brightly colored daffodils. What I wanted to show you is a basic, the primer on how to plant uh, bulbs. I'm digging in a big hole. I wanted to plant a clump, uh, different clumps that are scattered throughout this garden bed instead of doing a big drift. And this clump, I am digging in for about six to eight inches deep. Um, this is pure garden organic compost. And by clearing this and creating a round hole that's six to eight inches deep, what I'm planning on doing is clear this with weeds, uh, any roots or any perennial weeds that have uh, really grown in this area for the last year, they need to be moved out because I need to put bone meal. Bone meal, in my experience, is the best additive for bulbs. It promotes more root growth and it overall gives the uh, good health for all these bulbs throughout the winter months. And once the temperature starts to rise and the soil begins to warm up, all these bulbs will now vigorously come up and we will get not only big blooms, but really healthy, robust ones. That's basically the principle of planting bulbs. You select an area where you want either a clump or a good drift of all different types of bulbs that you choose to plant. You dig in, oh, I'd say six to eight inches would be the ideal planting depth. But I've also learned from another school of thought that the deeper you bring them in and plant them, the safer and the more healthy the plants become or the bulbs become. So um, right now I'm settling in for between six to eight inches deep. I'm clustering all these bulbs i think in this uh, planting hole i was able to put about 12 or 13 different bulbs and the effect of this will be a, a a very healthy grouping a clump of greenery that will come up in the spring and right around march time you will see some of these good yellow egg yolk yellow flower and uh, that would be an exciting thing to see after planting in all the bulbs, the rest is easy. You just dump back all the soil that you've uh, uh, excavated. And for me, what I do is I use another layer of bone meal just so I know exactly where the spot is for these bulbs. You can also put in a label, that way you know exactly what type of bulb you planted and you know the location of the bulbs. In this next segment, in the same garden bed, I wanted to show you a different type of plant that I uh, wanted to put in. It's about seven o'clock at night. I still have some daylight, but I received in the mail just today a rootstock of Papaver somniferums. These are the oriental poppies, the big, lousy, um, crepe paper-like uh, flowers that we get. These are plants that are showy. They are blousy. They give you a good uh, pop of color uh, within a large garden bed. And what I'm doing here is uh, just lightly placing this rootstock in a deep hole 
filled with bone meal. And again, bone meal I use because it promotes root production. Um, since this is a highly valuable uh, piece of root stock, I wanted to make sure that it has the right environment and give it a good fresh start. Um, this is so easy to plant. I always call this my dig. You drop either this root stock or the bulbs, you cover it over, and there goes the plant. It will start to settle in and the maturity time is between now, during the winter, and as the soil starts to heat up again in early spring. Incidentally, in the clip, you see me driving in a bamboo stick, and this is just simply to mark exactly the location of this poppy. We don't want the poppy to um, be crunched over or uh, us stepping on it accidentally as I start filling in this garden bed more and more. Next thing to do, obviously any plant that you put in, you water and you water generously. Allow the drain, uh, the water to completely drain and uh, that should give it a good fresh start. This is the best time to plant anything, any perennial, any soft uh, tender plant or any tree or any shrub because the soil is still warm. It gives the plant enough time to mature and settle in, giving you a good showing come springtime.